Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to make a tiny box with some uh, shrimp cheese in there, some buttercream cheese. I don't actually know the right word for it, but um, I'm gonna do that and then we're going to make a piece of bread with the cheese on there as well. And this is all a tiny experiment. I made this little 3D print file for the little box for the cheese. So I just wanted to do something about it and if it turns out good I might do some more uh, food stuffing in small boxes but let's see. So let's get to it and see what we are going to do. So here I have the small boxes that I designed and 3D printed. The lid I did paint that white and the bottom got some clear on a resin on top to make it shiny and translucent. I will link in the info box for this print file, but you can make this cheese in any kind of little box if you want to. For the shrimps I am using a opaque white, this meat color and the meat color, um, a tiny bit of that um, mixed up with some opaque white for the uh, lighter meat color. Um, these are going to be my shrimps, so I rolled these out in a uh, smaller setting on my pasta machine and now I am stacking them so I have the white, the, um, what you call that, the light meat color and then the meat color and then again white, light meat color and meat color. I cut my little stack and put it on top of each other so the pattern was uh, fitting. Now I'm rolling that through my pasta machine on a setting 2, that is the second biggest setting on my pasta machine. Um, and I am just going to cut the end of here again, so that I have a nice and neat edge uh, to work from. You see that right there. And I'm going to cut this into half and then I am stacking it on top of each other again. And with the right side down, please. So white on top of the meat color, just like that, stacking it. And now I actually have the thickness and the pattern that I want for my shrimps. I made sure that the two layers here are stacked really nice together so that I don't have any air bubbles. Then I'm making myself an edge that I can work from and I'm cutting out this thin, thin slice of these. Um, so I have three slices so I get a lot of shrimps out of these three rows here. So you see the lines here clearly in these canes here. Uh, let me get closer so you can see what I'm doing. I'm cutting off the first little piece here on the cane. Now I'm just cutting off a very small piece of the cane so that I have the stripes going along and I'm rolling it together um, along with the stripes and then I'm just going to bend it a tiny bit and I'm just taking my box to see the size and this is a little too big for my uh, box here so I'm cutting an even thinner slice this time and I'm rolling it between my fingers and I am rolling it between my fingers so the lines are still being very crisp. And when I'm happy with the rolling, then I just bend it again. And you can see it's getting smaller because I had a even tinier uh, s a slice of the cane here. So now I'm just going to work through all three canes here. And I actually decided to cut this cane in half. This way I can cut a, a bit thicker slice and it's easier to work with uh, and roll. So the thinner a cane, the thicker the slice, but you will have to um, find out with some trial and arrows here. Um, but now I showed you how to make the cane for the shrimps and how to do the shrimps. So now just do all of them. Mm. 
My shrimp has uh, been bacon now, so I am going to the cheese and I'm using my Modena paste for that. Um, you can use some Fimo liquid or the bacon bond for this. Uh, just make sure you get the right color of the cheese in there. And this Modena paste is uh, translucent, so I had to put in some colors. Um, I placed some white and some off-white and a tiny bit of a uh, light light brown um, in there and I mix that together. I just didn't get enough white in there and that will be a problem later. Um, but I will find out and figure out a way to do it. So just put a lot more of the white in there than I do. And mix it all really good together. Then I am going to take some of my shrimps and I'm going to mix that into this Modena paste. And when I am ready, I'm going to fill up the little uh, box here with the cheese that we just made. And I'm going to let it dry because that's uh, what you need to do with the Modena paste. So that's so easy. I created some bread slices for the cheese and I am going to link for that video in the info box below so that you can find how to do the bread. And now I'm just going to make the same mixture as I did for the little box. So my Modena paste, some white and a little off-white and stuff like that into that with my soft pastel mixing it really good together with a few shrimps and then placing it on the bread And then I have this green bell pepper uh, slices here that I made recently. I will link in the info box below for this video. Um, and I'm just placing a tiny piece of that on my cheese. Uh, so now I have a piece of bread with cheese and bell pepper on top. And then I just let that air dry. Um, as it was dry, I noticed that my cream cheese was kind of see-through and um, didn't have the color that I wanted it to. So I took some of my white pastel and mixed that with my glaze, my female glaze. Um, and I'm just glazing the cheese only and I'm doing that on the bread and in the little box. So I'm mixing this together and just painting that on top of my cheese. So if you do this, uh, please put some more white into your Modena paste or if you are using the female liquid, make some kind of um, try out first on a piece of uh, something with the color you made and see if it's the right one for your cream teas cheese. This way you uh, can avoid uh, having to give it a little more white um, afterwards when it's all done. But I did manage to save mine with this um, mixture of white um, soft pastels and uh, glaze. When I was happy with my color of the cream cheese, I took the female glaze as is and I glazed the small pieces of bell pepper here on each of my bread pieces. So that's all there is for this video. It was not that big of a video, but I had a lot of fun with it and I hope you will have it too. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Happy crafting. 
So that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed that little video, even though that it was just a short video. So um, thank you for watching and happy crafting.